Hello everyone, I'm Hui Xun Feng. I'm now a graduate student of Computer Science at National Taiwan Ocean University. Today I'm going to talk about brief history of Linux CPU scheduler. I will first introduce the development timeline of CPU schedulers, and then a brief introduction to each scheduler, notably the problems making which being superseded. This is the development timeline of CPU schedulers. Year 1991, the first ever Linux process scheduler came along with the initial release of the Linux kernel. Moving forward to 1999, Linux version 2.2 introduced scheduling classes, in which both Schedule RR and Schedule 5.4 appeared. The next one, 2001, Linux version 2.4 implemented the big goal of unscheduler. Moving forward to 2003, the big goal of one scheduler was introduced, which lives in the kernel for circa 4 years. Next, 2007, the completely fair scheduler was introduced, which essentially is a big goal of log n scheduler. Moving forward to 2014, Linux 3.14 introduced the scheduled daylight scheduler, which is based on earliest daylight first scheduling algorithm and constant bandwidth server. Five years later, image aware scheduling was introduced in Linux version 5.0. So, this is a timeline of the CPU schedulers. We can even say that the evolution of the CPU scheduler is basically the evolution of the kernel itself. Because, for example, multi-core processor didn't exist in the early years of the kernel. The very first CPU scheduler. The scheduler traverses whole, the whole run queue to find a task with the highest time size to execute. The problem with this scheduler is that all CPUs share the same run queue, which leads to bad scalability, and it has limited number of task amount due to the nature of array. Therefore, the big goal of unscheduler was born. It is mainly to solve the task among limitation problem. Still, the scheduler has to traverse the whole run queue to find the most suitable task to execute, making the scheduler bloated when there are many tasks presented in the system. Besides, the run queue is still shared across all CPUs. Coming up next is the big goal one scheduler. It is introduced by Ingo Mona. The data structure for a run queue is two set of bmap and priority queue, also known as active queue and expired queue. The scheduler picks the next task from the active queue, using the bmap to get the index of the highest priority queue, then picks the first task of the queue. By leveraging corresponding CPU instruction, the getting index operation can be done in constant time. Starting from this scheduler, each CPU has its own run queue. We may think that it might be a perfect scheduler due to its big goal of one nature. However, in order to provide better interactivity, many heuristics have been added subsequently, making it possible to unevenly distribute the time size. The next scheduler, completely fair scheduler, inspired by Concolivar's staircase data scheduler which is a bit similar to the big of one scheduler. It also has the so-called XQ and inspire queue, but it removes the heuristics added into the big of one scheduler. And the scheduling algorithm is also revised, making the scheduling latency being bounded. The staircase data scheduler has once almost made its way into the main line. Unfortunately, shortly after its introduction, Ingo Mona came out with the completely fair scheduler which has later been merged into the mainline. Concoliva has then left the Linux kernel development for quite some time. The data structure for a run queue of CLS is a rebreak tree. The scheduler picks the leftmost node, which corresponds to the must start task at the time. The picking operation itself can be done in custom time, whereas the in queue operation has time complexity of big goal log n. The CFS uses the so-called virtual runtime to keep fairness across tasks in the system, 
which is essentially a weighted total CPU time a task obtained. Per entity load tracking, introduced by Protune et al. on Linux version 3.8. Prior to the introduction of the PLT, Linux tracks the loading on a per queue basis. The deficiency with this is that the scheduler will not be able to know exactly which task is contributing the load to the run queue, which may in turn lead to bad decisions. For example, migrating a light loading task to another CPU instead of the heavy loading one. The PELT is now used by one of the CPU frequency governors, MD Schedule Util, which can then adjust the CPU frequency more sanely because of the detailed information. Another use case, load balancer of the CFS. With PLT, it can then migrate tasks based on per task loading instead of choosing one blindly. The next scheduler is Scheduled Data Scheduler, introduced by Joe Rillery et al. on Linux version 3.14. The main purpose of this scheduler is to serve time sensitive tasks. In the days without this scheduler, tasks having precise timing requirement have to resort to Schedule RR or Schedule 54 scheduler. However, both of them schedule tasks with fixed priority, which results in these tasks may be delayed by their priority. Schedule Dance Scheduler, on the other hand, guarantees the required timing by performing a schedulability test prior to actually scheduling the task. In other words, if the timing requirement is not able to meet, the scheduler simply rejects to schedule a task. Coming up next is the energy aware scheduling. It's introduced mainly by ARM and Dinaro on Linux version 5.0. Its advantage is to reduce energy consumption, especially on mobile devices. Without EAS, the scheduler will not aware of the capacity of each processor core which varies a lot, at least on big little architecture. The scheduler may in turn choose its appropriate core for the task. For example, giving an IO bound task a performance core. It is worth noting that EAS is coupled with PLT. That is, EAS uses information provided by PLT to evaluate performance versus energy trade-offs when doing task placement decision. We are writing a book on Linux CPU scheduling, which can be considered as the extended materials of this talk. So far, it covers the necessary background about operating system concepts and the evolution of CPU scheduling in Linux kernel, along with the relevant implementations. Please contact me if you would like to read the draft of this book. These are my references. Thank you for attending the talk. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email.